Hello, this is Barney from Napalm Death and you're watching Loudwire. Uh, the band or vocalists that first introduced me to extreme vocals, well, I mean, I mean, fundamentally, it would be Motorhead. You know, it was unintentionally extreme vocals. It was not quite the growl, but there was a definite snarl over the top of what Lemmy was trying to do, you know, uh, normally. Um, but then also you could say, where it was clearly a little bit more extreme was uh, Venom, Kronos. But, but for me, actually, in terms of my direct connection to music, in terms of being able to play later on, was probably um, GBH, Colin from GBH. Um, the Leather, Bristle, Studs and Acne album. I was... I think I was 12 when I first heard it and I just 12 or 13 something like that and I just I, I, I don't know just the sense of being uplifted uh, it was it was like it was like listening to something imagine that the vocalist like whole face was just bulging out you know because he was just shouting and screaming into this microphone thinking back about it now it just sounded like um, a caveman fronting other cavemen in a band, you know, discovering how to beat things on other things to make a sound at that time. I know, I know that's kind of sounds like something that people use that aren't quite into the music and to describe it, but that's what it sounded like to me. What was it like trying to trying to scream and growl for the first time? I mean, I just. I just really tried it, you know. I, I was in and around a music scene in Birmingham that was very much this could be your band, you can do this, you know. The 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 sort of punk hardcore metal scene was always about that, you know. It was pushing anybody in the direction that they could make music being a band. So I just literally tried it, you know. I had a I had a band together with um, uh, actually the bass player on the 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 B side of Scum, uh, Jimmy. Andy Well from Bolt Thrower um, and Steve from Cerebral Fix on Guitars. It was called Colostomy, um, which is the, the 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 bag thing you get on the side when you have some problems, you know, in, internally. Um, and um, yeah, it, there was it was a knockabout band, you know. It was just some good fun, and um, I I suppose at that point I realised that I could do it. Luckily. Um, I think even at that point, I had an understanding that it's not just from the throat. And if you do that, you're going to knock it out in no time at all. You've got to sing like a traditional singer. You've still got to push it out from the diaphragm. That's how you get the power and the thrust, you know, like, like a, I don't know, like a space rocket or something. So, um, so that, that's, that, that's, that's what I did, you know, and I was quite pleased with the result. I didn't, I didn't really practice vocals. Back in the day, I, I'm all about napalm. Is all about the spontaneity, and I was, I was about the spontaneity. You know, if it was something that I had to kind of construct a little bit, you know, and hone it, wasn't interested. I was interested in the noise that could be made from the vocal region at any particular point in time. And from then on, onwards, really, I think, as I say, Kronos from Venom was, you know, really instrumental in in, in, in sort of getting it going. Um, from then onwards, really, it was a combination of things from metal and hardcore punk and other things. And then things like Michael Gyra from Swans, um, um, Ian Curtis from Joy Division, um, um and so on and so forth really i mean there's a there's a whole list of stuff and you know the point is about some of the vocalists i mentioned in the latter part there they wouldn't immediately be vocalists that people would say would associate with extremity but if you listen to what they were doing at particular points in time that was extreme you know in the sense that they were pushing it you know they were pushing the dynamics the aggression <laughs> No, nobody else is really doing that you know so 
you know, this whole extremity thing is, is, is a really wide spectrum, you know, and it's better that way because you then you don't repeat yourself. You know, extreme music can be as repetitious as the next thing unless you try and, you know, branch out a little bit. You know, that the, the high shrieks, you know, that we call them the, the Japanese hardcore screams. So those can be a little bit tricky in the sense that, you know, it's like, it's like somebody sucking your brain out with a bicycle pump, you know, under certain conditions. If you've re got a really hot gig, especially, you know, and you try some of those really hysterical screaming type things, you know, you can basically, you start to get the spins and you can fall on the floor sometimes, you know, so that can be tricky. But that's conditional to the gig conditions you're playing in. There was one of the Hellfests where um, it, the gig was uh, done under, I mean, uh, whoever thought of this was complete genius not you know but it's like one of the stages are under a metal dome in the middle of summer you know and just i remember going to do the show and it was it was brutal already you know without even playing and I, all i remember is going for a particular vocal and then waking up on the stage you know with the the guy that was working for us like literally pouring water on top of me you know and, and like with a towel and uh, it was it was bad you know it was heat exhaustion but and that can be really dangerous you know in all seriousness but but now i i just go for it you know it's 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 all about the spontaneity do do i have difficult enunciation for me is I'm kind of balanced between two things really there because I think that the, the main that's the reason why you have a lyric sheet duh you know because if 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 your vocals are so impenetrable and purposely so up to a point then with napalm is a band of ideas you know so the lyrics the 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 the, the ability for people to be able to chew the lyrics over is absolutely essential so that's why we have a lyric sheet so that gives me an out a little bit in some ways enunciation is important it's nice to get that that sort of phrasing the mouth sounds out because that actually gives you a bit of extra dimension it does it just doesn't sound like a monotone sometimes a monotone drawl is okay you know and it's it, it, it's appropriate but there are other times where where the, the the delivery and the phrasing can be helped by hearing those vowel sounds or those or those you know consonant sounds copying the mic is not something i do you know uh, you know I, I will not be critical of other vocalists you know they will do what they need to do but for me the microphone was always ab about being open around it you know so so you know having the full um full sound um um you know the surround thing almost going into the microphone if, if you copy it you're kind of restricting the you know the 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 the, the sound's going to bounce around in your hands a little bit and um and you won't get the full dynamics of it so i um it was it was never my thing i don't do anything for pre-show preparation to be completely honest with you i never have done you know my my whole thing with with with, with singing is that take care of your body and your voice will take care of itself so if you're healthy in yourself everything's connected and your throat will be as well you know for, for me for me personally um i well i don't do honey because i'm vegan so i don't do honey you know most i don't do sprays or anything like that i don't do any warm-ups before the shows you know that again going back to the spontaneity of napalm napalm death for me is like flicking on a light switch when you go you just go how do i pace myself for breathing for live shows um i well i don't um i don't really you know i just go for it and, and see what happens what do i avoid doing before shows well i mean the, the the big secret with that is you need to you need to time your eating with what works for you and your metabolism so for me um no eating two hours before the show apart from a banana banana is the stuff of magic you know if i, I eat a banana like 45 minutes before i go on stage to get that potassium you know thing to hopefully stop like things like um pulls in the muscles and stuff or or, or at least uh, um, avoid it to some extent um and then yeah the meal um healthy meal like 
two hours before a gig uh, or as healthy as I can get, you know, around around gigs or at gigs. Um, yeah, just don't eat anything significant after that because otherwise you will be you're vomiting, you know, certainly what, what Napalm Death does on stage, it, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to be vomiting, you know, during the gig. It's not good for anybody. So, so that's it really. And, and after shows, I like to, you know, I like to let the steam valve go a little bit. I like to, I, I might have a beer if we're out on tour for a few weeks i'll have a beer two or th beers three maximum twice a week that's it for me you know and um and yeah after that i just kind of loosen off um let the steam off you know bit of a bit of a you know hang around for a little while if there's people out with us maybe and then re read a read a piece of a book and then just go to sleep you know that's really it. i'm quite 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 boring in that respect mm -hmm.